We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Thursday morning from 6 till 8, it's Patrick Berry, owner of the Westfield News Group. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Owl Sports Weekly on 89.5 WSKB. I am Devin Bates alongside Joe Braverman and Pete Coles here, and we are bringing in the spring season. We were (laughs) off last week for spring break, and now we're back. The teams are back from Florida, and there's a lot to report on from down there in Florida. And we'll start with the lacrosse team. We're going to have several lacrosse players joining us a little later on in the show, and they have just been tearing it up right now. They are 6-0, coming off a big overtime victory against Keene State. And as I said right now, the record at 6-0, and that game going to overtime, it was a 13-12 to victory. And Joe, you were calling that game with me. Just looking at what this team 
has been able to do so far this year. You know, what do you like from this Owls lacrosse team right now? Well, it was kind of hard to say against Keene State because it was a very uncharacteristic game for them. I mean, Keene State came in and they were challenging Westfield. It looked like it was just going to be another blowout with 4 nothing, but then Keene State really challenged them once they got to the middle in that attacking zone. They were able to force the turnovers, and they were able to come back, even get a lead at one point against Westfield. Um, but it's it's the determination for me uh, for Westfield State. Because if you look at this team, and we were mentioning it a ton during the broadcast, that they only graduated one senior, and that was Alana Melantz and the goalkeeper. But, you know, aside from that, the goalkeeping area, you've got virtually – every player returning so obviously the chemistry is going to be there they're familiar with each other and you just got a ton of great players who just put their head down and do nothing but attack and uh to to your point there in the in the goaltending situation maria woodall is the current goaltender now and she actually got a, a lot of action last year as well so not only do you have one senior graduating but that senior who graduated um, wasn't exactly playing every single game there in net, so it, it really helps to have that continuity in net as well. And looking at some of the team statistics right now, they're scoring 15.3 goals per game while letting up just 10, so their defense has looked very solid, and I think in that Keene State game, we saw their defense really play a role as well. Woodall had a couple key saves that kept the Owls in there, I thought. Absolutely, and uh, the defense, I will say... Uh It struggled at times. I'll I'll say I will say that that it did struggle at times, but they made the stops when they needed to. It's I just Keen State was able to just challenge them like a way I haven't seen in quite a long time. Uh, You know, they just came in and attacked. And the biggest thing though was that Keen State converted off of Westfield's turnovers. That was the biggest thing. And, you know, Westfield, they're a team that loves to play fast, quick. They like to move the ball up the field. Sometimes it hurts them. We saw them cause a few turnovers, which gave Keene State possession. They were able to come right back, fire it in past Woodall. Uh, So that's the biggest thing for Westfield is that cleaning up the turnovers will lead to less goals from your opponent. And that, that Keene State team, um, they, they were 1-7 and seven going into that game. But let's not kid ourselves, you know, they, they were a pretty good team. And we saw that in the way they played. And also, in that Little East Conference, the competition can sometimes be a little tougher. So, you know, it's never a given that the Owls are going to be able to beat a team like Keene State. Last year in the game they played against them in Keene, they lost 14-8. to eight. So it just goes to show that this team is really constantly improving and one other thing that they also improved on so far to start off the year from their great season last year I might add where they made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament uh, they were able to win all three of their games in Florida and I thought that was huge because last year um, they had a couple losses there which you know it didn't really put a damper on their season or anything but it's not exactly the best momentum booster to lose both of your games down there but then they come out and they win three in a row down there I thought that was big when you go down to spring uh, when, when you go down to Florida for spring break that's really where you find your team chemistry what works and what doesn't and this I don't think Westfield needed that much time because there were so many familiar players as I mentioned one graduating senior that they didn't need much time to figure out okay this person has to be here this system works great they already knew that heading into the year so it was just like another three games just in a different location for them and they, they've shown an ability to be able to go on runs to come back in games. And they had that game against Vassar College. It was the last game of their spring break trip. Uh, Vassar went on a 4-0 run, and then Westfield followed back with a 5-0 run of their own, and then they led 18-16 to with 11 minutes left to go in the game. And then uh, Lambert and Brooke Williams were able to find the back of the net and kind of put things away for the Owls. But they have this ability um, to score in bunches and, you know, um, you bring up a point about how the defense looked a little weak at times in that last game. I think that's fair because they had that, I, I'm blanking on her name, but there was that player from Keene State who scored like four goals in a row, and that was that was a, a clear lapse in defense. That can't happen. But also um, the, the ability they had to come back from that I thought was, was really strong because you know, they once they put their mind to it, it looked like they were able to just go in on offense and score at will. And I think we saw that most with Sid Lambert There was one particular goal where she kind of just won the draw, took it all the way down the field and put it in. You know, it looked like it was really easy for her. And so you have these players who are able to bring in that individual talent and really take over a game if they need to. And Sid Lambert right now has 19 goals on the year. 
I mean, that is that is some crazy numbers. Six games in, and we're already talking about 19 goals. She's going to be looking for 20 wow. in her next game. So yeah, it, it's been it, it's been a really a really hot season right out of the gate. And Alexa Tanelli with 12 goals is also adding to that as well. But you know, Joe, just looking down this roster, that individual talent really stands out to you as something that could be huge going forward. Absolutely, there's no one flaw. I would say when you get these lineups in, I mean, you got incredible defense coming from. Kristen Longbottom, Olivia Overdahl, Sam Donahoe, they play tremendous defense. And then you got the attackers like Lambert, Tonelli, Nimskern, Williams. I mean, the list goes on that, you know, if you, if you look at the stats, you know, there have been multiple players that have scored a point. I can't do the math in my head right now, but there are a bunch of players who have at least one point, which is absolutely huge in the uh, for a team for a team like this is that it's not going to be Sid Lambert or Alexa Tinelli every single time. It's going to be new players coming in like Williams or or Sam Coyle, Barkis. You know, you you name it. Is that it's not going to be that same player over and over, and that's what kills teams. Is that it's not just going to be in isolation with Sid Lambert attacking that middle. Yes, and this is a team that was really coming in, and they were expected. They were picked to win the mask hack in the preseason poll it really looks like they're starting to live up to that a little bit and uh just to round out our talk on the lacrosse team here um you, you know that they're looking right now last year they made it to the second round of the ncaa tournament this year they start off six and oh um this is really one of the teams along with the women's basketball team where you can look and, and say you know if they if they have a strong season and they make it to that tournament I, i'm not so sure they couldn't make it to the round of 16 or something like that and i think that you're seeing one of the best chances we've had in a Westfield State team in a while to really make some noise there in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, not to put pressure on this team, but, you know, you have a lot of the same players <laughs> as you did last year. So, I mean, it, it's natural to question, you know, what this team might be able to do going down the line. And I think when these players come in here, it's going to be interesting to maybe, you know, ask them about that a little bit. What was it like to play in the second round of that tournament? What What are you hoping to accomplish this year? Because I think that... You know, even just winning an NCAA tournament game is a huge accomplishment. But, you know, they lost 15 to 1 in the second round last year. I'm sure that kind of weighs on their mind a little bit. And they probably want to get back there and try to make some noise. You're right on every single uh, argument that you're saying there that this team probably has the best chance to make a really deep run in this NCAA tournament. I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, if they make the tournament, can they get past that second round? Of course, you mentioned it 15 to 1 in uh, Geneva, New York, against William Smith College. The, that's the biggest thing. And if you look at the run last year, it was absolutely a dominant run. Once they headed to the tournament, it was a 13-8 win over Framingham State, a 15-5 win over Bridgewater State. So there's no question that they have the talent to get to the NCAA tournament. It's just a matter of how deep can they go. And I think because every this team is so familiar, there are so many returning faces that it's only going to help them. Make sure you stick around at 8.30. We're going to have some lacrosse players in here to talk about their season so far. But coming up, we're going to talk about baseball's time in Florida. It's Owl Sports Weekly.
underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield. Great futures start here. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardina family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. Underwriting for community radio on WSKB is brought to you in part by Rockies. Over 30 convenient locations throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Florida. One of the nation's largest ace dealers. Expertise in great product selection in paint, hardware, lawn, and garden. That's Rockies. Rock solid service since 1926. On the web at rockies.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. He rules the roost on Thursday from 6 till 10. It's Patrick Berry. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. And we're back on Owl Sports Weekly. Now, moving on from the lacrosse team to another team that was down there in Florida, the baseball team, currently sitting at 6-6-1 six, six, and one overall. And they were, uh, you know, a little bit of a mixed bag down there in Florida. They got a couple games in, actually, before they went down. Uh, they faced off against Ramapo College, um, which was a doubleheader, and they actually went down to Flemington, New Jersey, which is pretty interesting. So just to get a couple games in there at the beginning of the year, they drove down to New Jersey. Um, they lost both of those games, however. Um, and then they came back and they had a doubleheader against Springfield College. They won 4-2 to two and tied 9-9. to nine. And then they went down to Florida. And in Florida, as I said, a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, they had a whole host of teams that they played. I mean, down here, they really, they had a full schedule. They were playing baseball. What's the makeup of this team? Is this heavy seniors, heavy um, younger? Y- you know, I think, I, I don't... I, I remember s- them graduating a lot of seniors last year, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. So it's really almost a little bit of a rebuilding process here, but they were still picked to win the Mass Okay. So I think what it is, is they graduated a couple seniors with talent, but they also just have a lot of players left over from that team. And of course, um, you know, you, you got to mention how this season ended for these guys last year. They they won a ton of games. They were really favored in the Mascac playoffs, and then for whatever reason, the Mascac playoffs just didn't work in their favor. They lost, you know, every game they played in, and uh, it was a really uh, it was a really down note to end the season for this team. So coming back this year, um, they're really hoping to try to get everything together and make that playoff run. And here in Florida, um, they they played in. Nine games. So they, they played nine games down in Florida, really got a packed schedule in there, a couple double headers, and they came away basically splitting. So they they went pretty much five hundred for the trip. They played St. Norbert College, St. Joseph's College of Maine, Fredonia, Franklin and Marshall College, Suffolk University, Hope College, and University of Southern Maine. And so um you you can see there that there really is a wide variety of teams. Um, that they played against, and they had one game go to 15 innings, and they ended up winning that game against Franklin and Marshall College, and then they they had one doubleheader sweep against Suffolk University, and then they they split one doubleheader against St. Norbert College, and the rest, um, they, they lost those games. And they haven't played anything yet since they came back from Florida, but looking at some of the numbers here from that trip, Alex Lafayette right now is re- leading the team in hits. He has 20 hits on the year. Uh, three of them went for doubles, and he has a triple as well, 10 RBIs. Anthony Crowley, who played a big role last year for this team, batting 367 with 18 hits and 17 RBIs. So he's leading the team in RBIs right now. And so you can kind of see things starting to take shape for this team. And then as far as pitching goes, um, some of your lower ERAs on this team right now, uh, Troy Solnier has appeared in four games. He's got a 1.35 ERA. Jamie Butler, 1.69. And uh, for your starters, uh, John Gostakis right now is a 233 ERA, 2-1 record. 
And so there's there's a relatively small sample size for this team right now, but you can kind of see the leaders start to take shape. And, uh, you know, Joe, as you as you look through these statistics and as you look through their schedule, what are your early thoughts on the baseball team? Well, the early thing for me is that we know this team can make it far. It's just a matter of getting it done once it comes to playoff time. We saw that last year. I mean, Westfield was the host for the, the MASCAC tournament, and they were bounced early. And that that's the biggest thing. But going to the players, I mean, the, the big key is going to be those, those players you just mentioned, Alex Lafayette and Anthony Crowley, those two are the the two you look for your power. And, you know, it's not – this is a situational baseball team is that they don't hit the long ball often, but those are the two players that can take it deep if they have – excuse me, if they have to. But the big thing for me also is the pitching as well. Right now I'm looking at Saunier and I'm looking at Butler. Uh, They had a great spring, uh, both making four appearances – Got an ERA under two, and uh, Gigetskis, I mean, he's that one starter. He's got that 2-3-3 ERA right now. He's looking good, and I think as time goes on, he's going to be contending for that ace role for Westfield. So this is a team that does have that potential, but the question is, once and if they get to the playoffs, how far can they go? Yeah, and that's that's the big key. I mean, it really almost makes it... Um, hard to talk about this team without talking about that playoff run last year because you know they could go out and have an awesome season and you're still just going to wonder if they're going to be able to you know pull it together in time for that playoff run and you know maybe something about hosting it at your own field got into their heads a little bit last year but you know they, they look like they're off to a pretty solid start and I'm definitely interested to see how this season goes and you know right now the winter weather looks like it's starting to subside a little bit so Don't I think jinx we're us, actually Devin. do not jinx <laughs> us. Knock on wood. <laughs> so, it's going to rain this weekend, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is once the snow stops, you have to start dealing with the rain and we saw last year that gave us a little bit of problems. And so well, I'll take rain over snow though. I'll this, take that. You yeah, know, but it still it still wipes out the field conditions. That's true. <laughs> and, and Especially at that field. Regardless the of the good, but. like regardless of uh the sport, the spring season is always so interesting to me too because it's like it's already kind of shortened to begin with. I mean, just looking at the calendar. It is compressed, yeah. Yeah, like we, the, the semester is over in, you know, like a month and a half, and they're trying to fit a whole season in here. The basketball season, you're starting in like November, and then it goes all the way until February, so there's a lot of time there. Here, it's like you miss a couple games, and then the next thing you know, you're the, the end of your season, you're trying to worry about your finals while also playing in double headers every other day. So it gets really complicated for these guys, and you know, um, you, you hope for their sake that a lot of these games don't get rained out and that they're able to get a good schedule in. And I think what we've seen so far, they, they've been able to do that, even though it's been you know less less than standard weather around here. Um, but they have been able to get some baseball in, and so we're, we're looking forward to potentially, hopefully, a warm up, and they'll be able to get some games over there at Bullens Field um, because last year they just renovated that. It's really nice over there, and so uh, the Not home Bullens Field. Oh, not Bowens Field. Hagen right. Field. Hagen yeah. Field. I'm confusing myself with the uh, with the field downtown. That's okay. Right. I went like that. Well, they're gonna play down at the at Bowens. That'd be sweet too. To play <laughs> that, down that would there. be really cool. They they, they That's should a think nice about field that. Down there, yeah. They should think about doing a game or two down there actually. But um, yeah. So uh, they'll be able to get some games off here at home soon. And so we are gonna take another break here because we have some lacrosse players coming in, and we will bring you that interview right after the break. It's Al Sports Weekly.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chickabee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. Visit on the web at baystatedental.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings from 6 till 8, it's Tina Gorman with Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. And we're back on Owl Sports Weekly here, 89.5 WSKB and still waiting on the lacrosse players, so we are going to go into some softball talk right now. Softball team sitting at 1-9 and nine overall on a six-game losing streak, so the uh, the end of that Florida trip didn't exactly go as planned for the softball team. They no, were... you, you never know, though. These, yeah. these trips, you know, especially with younger teams, these trips are a chance for a team to gel. They may still lose, but they come back, and now they start gelling toward, towards the beginning of the season, and and then they start going great. You never know. Yeah, and, uh, you know, let's take a closer look at some of Sometimes these Sometimes the coaches try things, too, in a, in a spring training trip like that, too. Yeah, and this is a team where, you know, last season also had its ups and downs, and so you do have a team that's kind of looking for that identity. And just taking a look at how they finished last year, they were 19 and 18, so very much a hot and cold team. Um, their Florida trip last year did go a little better, but you know, as as you said, Pete, looking for some of the things you can try to do with your roster, tweaking things, trying out new pitchers. Um, that that's always something that happens in these games, and you know, they they had a couple really close games. They they had a game, um, an eight to nine loss against Fairleigh Dickinson, a two to three loss against the University of New England. So that means they're hanging they're hanging in games with with good teams. Well, yeah, and then also they had some go to extra innings, like against uh, Renessler. But they lost one to nine, so you know, in that extra inning there, things just kind of fell apart, imploded. Yeah. yeah. So some of these games were a little bit closer than others. They did get it one. It sounds like they're hanging with everybody though. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, they, they are got potential. Yeah, and uh, you know, just looking a little bit at like the roster right now, how how some of these players are doing individually. Um, what, what are you seeing, Joe, as, as this team is really just starting to get going here? I mean, you look at the stat sheet, and there's there's not a heck of a lot there to report on yet. It's still early in the season, but are you seeing anything there that jumps out at you a little bit? Well, the big thing that jumps at, out at me is Matty Atkakaitis. Is, you know, that 476 average is definitely something to keep an eye out for, and she's only played in seven games. Seven games, all of them she started, so... That's really the big thing I'm watching for is she's going to be that X factor, I believe, come down the road. And not only that, but on the pitching side, you got Emily Woodworth, you know, uh, five appearances, five games started. That one in four record, but with a 3.39 ERA. So we can see that she's able to to get it done when she can. It's just a matter of getting the run support, which we've seen a bunch of, we've seen in the past, you know, a bunch of pitchers, you know, those tough luck games where you give up maybe a minimal amount of runs, but still your team can't score. So if the offense can support Woodworth, she would have a much greater record than what that one in four record shows. And they were 19 and 18 last year, as I just said, but they were also 11 and three in the MASCAC. And so they were able to really have a pretty good MASCAC schedule. And in the preseason poll, they received one first place vote. They were, they were picked second um, in the preseason poll overall, but they did receive uh, one team at least has confidence in them that they're going to be able to pull that off. And so sometimes this non-conference schedule, the teams you play, yeah, they're tough, but it might help you going down the line and so we might see if they're able to do something like that um a little later on as things as things transpire and um i believe that we're going to get um some lacrosse players in here pretty soon but joe just wrapping up the softball talk um the mascac schedule hasn't really started yet so there could be um, a lot of good things coming for them yeah definitely uh there, there's a lot of things coming for uh for softball here um the the big the biggest thing obviously i mentioned is run support that's going to be 
uh, the absolute key uh, coming down the road as we get our interview station set up. Yeah, and so um, we, we're just going to kind of transition here into lacrosse a little bit. You heard us talking um, earlier about the team, and right now sitting at 6-0, and um, there was a big Keene State game that just finished up uh, a couple days ago, and so that, that was a really good momentum booster as well. And um, we're going to have a, a couple players on here right now, and I, I'd just like to go around um, each of you, just introduce yourselves and uh, what position you play on the team. Hi, I'm Kirsten Longbottom. I'm a defender, and I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm Sam Coyle, and I'm a senior, and I'm an attack player. All right, awesome. So um, just a, a couple questions for you guys in the season so far. Last season, uh, you played some tough teams down there in Florida during spring break. Um, you went 0-2 on the trip. Um, what was it like to go down to Florida this year and win all three of those games? It was it was honestly awesome. It was like we've I'm a senior and all four years and we've never done that we've always lost every single game so it was honestly sick because we always play like really good teams and like we always know like it's going to be a hard game and we're just going to learn from it so it was really awesome to actually win um yeah we were it was honestly like a very eye-opening trip for us because we knew that coming back from it that we were going to be able to play a really hard team but still do really awesome and we proved that in the Keene State game. All right, so um, here's, here's how we'll work this interview here, because in the studio we only have so many microphones, I guess. So um, <laughs> we'll just go down the line. Uh, two more players just walked in. If you guys want to take turns, just say um, your name and what position you play on the team. Hi, I'm Marissa Nemeskern, and I'm a midfielder. Hi, I'm Sydney Lambert, and I'm a mid midfielder. All right, so we were just asking um, them. We were talking about, uh, you know, several years in a row, you go down to Florida, not able to win some games there, but then this year you go down 3-0 in the trip, and you had that one game against Vassar College, a ton of goals scored. What was it like uh, to be able to go down there and win those games, and how was that for your confidence as a team? Um, I think on those three wins in Florida made us have a huge confidence. We were all pumped up. And especially winning the game against Vassar, we were not expected to win at all. And the fact that we came up strong and held the game with them, it was like a goal-to-goal -goal game, and we ended up with the win. We were just all really proud of ourselves. Joe, did you have a question? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, getting off of spring break, along with that spring break trip, you guys are 6-0 uh, and on the year. Uh, would you attribute that to maybe having a familiar roster since you only graduated uh, Alana Melanson last year? Yeah, so we definitely are used to each other playing, which definitely helps a lot. But we've also grown so much as a team, and that's really made us better, too. And we've also like learned from some things from last year that brought on to this year. And we've gained a lot of good freshmen that have contributed a lot to our team, which is awesome. And I just think um, we've just grown overall. Yeah, let me ask you about those freshmen, actually, and uh, I don't know who wants to answer this, but just talk a little bit about um, who was brought in this year, um, what sort of role they're playing with the team, and uh, how, how that kind of improves you guys overall. I believe you have um, a freshman goalkeeper as well that came in, so yeah, just talk a little bit about that freshman class coming in and what you're kind of expecting from them this year. Um, yeah, so we had, I think, four freshmen come in. Uh, two defenders, one goalie, and a midfielder. And honestly, they're awesome. They're a great fit for the team. They fit in really well. They're really hard workers. Like, honestly, like we're so proud of them. They come into a team that's like been together since last year, and like they fit in awesome. They, they're just, they're, they're great. They're so much fun. And um, so last year, you made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament there. Um, it was a tough loss, but making it there is something that a lot of teams um, in Westfield State Athletics can't say they did. Won an NCAA tournament game, made it to the second round. What did that experience do for you guys? What was it like to be able to, at the end of last season, play in that NCAA tournament? And, you know, how, how is that helping you as you start this year out? Um that was a huge confidence booster it was so cool to go to new york and play like at that level um i'm pretty sure i think we were the first team to win at westfield and the ncaa's so that was so cool and then um oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> but um i think that correlated a lot into this year we have a lot to live up to and that's our motivation to get back there 
this year. Yeah, I want to stay with you, Sydney, uh, about that uh, Keen State game because it went to overtime, and I got to say, your your overtime goal was just incredible. Talk about uh, the sequence because you got the pass from uh, Sam Donahoe. You came in, and then you lost the ball, but you were able to track it back and still get it in. <laughs> walk, walk me through that play uh, Actually, in overtime. I did not remember. I, I don't remember that at all. Like, when I watched Just kind back, of in the zone. Like, I lost the ball. <laughs> but, yeah, I just didn't really. I just wanted to beat them so bad. Yeah. So I just kept my eye on the ball and tried to put it in the back of the net, and I ended up being able to do it. And what does it do for your team to play in a close game like that? And the game against Vassar College, that was also a close game. But here against Keene State, you know, really back and forth. Uh, they had that one player who scored like four goals in a row, and you guys were able to come back from that. Um, how, what was that game like, and how much does it help to be able to play in an overtime game like that early on in the season before your conference schedule as a team? It's definitely good to get that experience, like playing in a high pressure game like that before conference play. Um, like it's it's good for everyone, but it just shows how you have to come together as a team, um, play together, and end up with the win. And I think we also learned a lot from that game. Like we made a lot of mistakes, and we also like did a lot of good things as well. So that helps us mm -hmm. going forward, especially in the conference games. Yeah. What are some of those uh, those group huddles like? Because you were down three, twelve to nine. What were you guys sort of saying to yourself to really pick yourself back up? Because there was plenty of time on the clock for you guys to make a comeback. Are you talking about the timeout or just after when they yeah, score? Yeah, just what are you saying to each other to help you get back into um, the game? So I know my coach brought us in and was like, girls, like, this, like we're down, but like we're we're fine. Like we're gonna we're gonna come back. Like just keep confidence. Don't let the momentum yeah, he was get to you. Very calm. Yeah, it was weird. He's never like <laughs> He's that. Never calm. And he was like he was wicked calm. We we're like, all right, like yeah, you know, you're right. We're good. Like, like we can do it. So then we did it. Yeah, he <laughs> never lost confidence, which is. Which is, yeah. Helpful. It's, it's very, yeah. It's very nice when your coach. Yeah, yeah having a coach who believes in you in that situation definitely helps out a little bit. And now um, you, you're you actually going to have a pretty nice uh, home stand here. So you have Emerson College coming up, and then Fitchburg State is going to be um, the uh, the MassCAC opener, and then Springfield College. Um, you you are traditionally a really good team at home. Um, do, is it really good for you guys to be able to have a long stretch of games like that where you don't have to leave campus and you're able to just play at home? It takes away all the worries about travel. You just got back from Florida. So, it, I mean, I'm sure it must be nice to be able to have four games in a row now here in Westfield. Yeah, we're actually, when we saw that, we were really pumped up because obviously we love our home games and we, we play a lot better at our home field just because we're used to it. We have our fans. Um, we don't have to travel. So it's a lot better. But um, even if we were on the road, it, it wouldn't really make a difference. But it is nice to be home and it's, it just makes us like more pumped up, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you you didn't even lose a game last year, <laughs> eight and zero, and I don't think you've lost in about maybe a year and a half. And uh, we'll wrap up this interview segment with, I mean, you're six and zero right now, and I'll pose this to everyone out there. Uh, you're six and zero. Uh, what are the overall expectations for the the rest of the season, and then heading into conference play? I think we are ex um, we are expecting everyone to just keep playing hard and keep getting better. That's the only thing. Whether we win or lose, we just want to keep getting better. And our main goal is to first come in first in our conference and then win mass cats and then hopefully make it a uh, NCAAs and make it past the first round again that'd be awesome all right well thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll contact you a little later on the season as things go on and we can have you here again uh, it's been really interesting to watch you guys season so far and we're looking forward to following it as things go on so we're going to take a break right now and we come back we'll talk a little bit more about the softball team and the track team as well it's Alice sports weekly Yeah, I got a brand new spirit speaking and it's done. Woke up on the side of the bed like I won. Talk like the wind in my chest. 
that that's on. G5 in the US to Taiwan. Now who can say that? I want to play back. Mama knew I was a needle in a haystack. I'm a body boy, plus way back. I got a feeling it's a rap. Hey, Sam. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling. Yeah. Never giving in, giving up's not an option, gotta get it in. Witness, I got the heart of 20 men. No fear, go to sleep in the lion's den. That glow, that spark, that crown. You're looking at the king of the jungle now. Stronger than ever, can't hold me down. A hundred miles gunning from the pitch's mouth. Straight game face, it's game day. See me running through the crowd full of melee. No trick plays, I'm Bill Gates. Take a genius to understand me. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling. Yeah. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Wally Computer Associates, one of the largest technology providers in North America. Headquartered in Southwick, Wally provides all of the products and services that you'd expect from a world class technology partner to schools, colleges, businesses, as well as state and local governments and agencies. Wally Computer Associates, meeting all of your technology needs on the web at WCA.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. And we are back on Owl Sports Weekly. A couple uh, housekeeping items to wrap up this winter season. There was some big finishes there at the NCAA D3 Indoor Track Championships on the women's side. Ashley Craig and Sabrina Prey placed 10th in the pole vault. Um, and so Jesse Carden finished 11th in the 5,000-meter run. And this was at the 2018 NCAA D3 Indoor Track and Field Championships in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Ashley Craig entered the meet as the 14th seed and cleared 3.70 meters. She finished 10th in the nation, as I said, and she set and improved the Westfield State record. And so this was also her first appearance in the NCAA Championships. Sabrina Prey 
entered the meet as the 15th seed in the 60 meter hurdles and placed 10th in the nation at a time of 8.97 seconds. So both both runners taking 10th. Ashley Craig in the pole vault 10th. Sabrina Prey in the 60 meter hurdles placed 10th. And then Carden entered the meet as the 15th seed after running to a first place finish in the Tufts qualifying meet. She ended the indoor season ranked 11th in the nation after running the 5,000 meter run in a time of 17.14.41. And of course, Carden was all, an All-American in cross country this past fall where she finished 36 at the NCAA championship race. She qualified for the NCAA outdoor track and field championships in the spring of 2016 in the 3,000 meter steeplechase where she placed ninth. And so the top eight finishers in the event earn All-American status. So um, all three of those runners finished just outside of that All-American status. Um, but strong finishes from those three athletes for Westfield State and, of course, very good for the track program in general. And we're excited to see where things go as the outdoor season now starts to pick up a little bit. And just looking around at some of the other stuff, going on right now in owl sports there's um a couple things um joe do you want to introduce this it was uh some news regarding our athletic director yes our athletic director richard lemfest was named an under armor athletic director of the year by the national association of college directors of athletics the award spans seven divisions the ncaa fbs the fcs division one aaa division two II, division three NAIA slash other four-year institutions and junior college slash community college winners are going to receive their awards at the James J. Corbett Awards Luncheon on Friday, June 29th at the NACDA's 53rd Annual Convention at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in Washington, D.C. So this is a very rare award, and congratulations to our own AD, Dick Lenfest, for, you know, we, we've been around him. Yeah. He's an absolutely great guy. He's easy to talk to, and what the sports programs are doing here at Westfield State just shows the testament to how much he is putting in as well. And I, I mentioned it, you and me know him very well, and we know the hard work that he can put in. So hats off to our pal Dick Lenfest. Yeah, and I want to read some of the quotes from him because uh, you got to love it. He really just heaps all the credit onto the coaches, the players, and everybody that makes Westfield Athletics, Westfield Athletics. He said, I'm really proud of our coaches, administrators, and staff, as well as all of our student athletes. Ultimately, this is an award to our institution and our entire department as we try to run a model Division Three athletics program, provide our student athletes with a chance to compete and win at the highest levels, and produce good students and good citizens in the community. And so, um, really looking at what, what Owls Athletics can do for somebody's character, but as, as well as uh, some of the things that the Owls Athletics teams have done. Um, since the start of the 2016-17 academic year, Westfield Athletics has seen its women's basketball, women's soccer, and women's lacrosse teams qualify for NCAA tournament play. And they sent, of course, we were just talking about Jesse Carden, um, really sort of the, uh, the poster athlete for Westfield State with what she's been able to do, um, to the NCAA cross-country championships multiple times and qualified multiple athletes for NCAA track and field championship events. So it, it really is a testament to what Westfield has been able to do in the past few years to be so successful on that national level. Um, it's been awesome as somebody working in the athletic department to, to see that happen. And so we're looking forward to more good things happening from this Westfield Athletics. And as you said, Joe, it, it looks to be a, a pretty rare award and a, a real accomplishment for Coach Lenvest. Yeah, my question is, he's been here since summer of 2005. How the heck has he not gotten this sooner? I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like this guy puts in such hard work and he, he's so determined and so humble as well as you, as you see from the quotes. Like You would think that he might have this a little sooner, but... <laughs> You know, I, I'm happy, though, either way. I mean, he's with Wisconsin's Barry Alvarez, Joe Castiglione from Oklahoma, Kirby Huckett from Texas Tech, and then Thomas Beckett from Yale uh, is there as well, will be there as well. So th those are some big names to be up there with. And you can you can say with, with guys like Joe Castiglione and Barry Alvarez, our own Richard Lemfest is going to be on stage with them winning the, the same award. 
Yes, yeah, so great news for Coach Lundfest, great news for Westfield State University athletics as a whole. And as we look ahead here at the schedule to what's coming up this next week, baseball is going to be having a doubleheader at Trinity College. And, of course, that was initially scheduled here in Westfield. That was moved. And then next week they have a Tuesday game against UMass Boston. And then on Wednesday there's a lot of action going on. It's going to be softball at Elms College for a doubleheader. Baseball will be versus Elms College here. And that is going to be over at the field um, and uh, Hagen Field. I almost said Bullens Field again there, Pete. You can't, you can't fool me twice. <laughs> Women's lacrosse is going to be versus Emerson College. That is going to be here. And then looking ahead a little bit, we're going to be doing a show before then, but you want to circle this on your calendar. The MASCAC opener for the women's lacrosse team is going to be Saturday, March 31st at noon. And so I believe that just about does it for us here today. We are going to leave you with that, and we're looking forward to following these spring sports, seeing how things play out. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much and we get all these games in. Knock on wood here. This has been Alice Sports Weekly. We'll see you again next weekend.